welcome to yet another video. Today, I have an exciting video for you guys today. It is my top 10 spring designer uh, fragrances for 2016. I do these videos every quarter and I do these videos every year. And I absolutely love doing it because it's always a chance at the beginning of the season to take stock and see what I'm going to be wearing. Uh, so I wanna get right into the video, but of course there are some precursors to this. Do it all the time for those of you who already know what these are, feel free to skip ahead. But for those of you who don't, these are fragrances that I've chosen. These are the fragrances that I will be wearing for the upcoming spring. Um, they are not uh, a best suggestion that I'm giving you. I'm simply giving you my options uh, that I've deemed that I'm gonna be wearing top 10, all right? That's pretty much it. Now spring for me, I consider to be, it's starting to get warm. I live in New York City. It's cold in the winter months and it can usually be delayed. In the past couple of years, it's been delayed a little bit more um, as far as when it gets warm, but it's, spring is usually a mix between cold and warm weather. It's a little bit chilly some days, some days it feels like summer almost, and it kind of oscillates between the two. But overall, it tends to trend more toward the warmer uh, time as the months go by, right? So that's pretty much all of the classifications and what I wear for spring. I wear, I generally choose to f wear fragrances that are good in warm weather and cold weather at the same time. So it's kind of a mix between the two, but it heralds the time where I get to, you know, bust out a lot of fragrances that I've been wearing. I'm excited now for fresh fragrances because I found a lot of fresh fragrances that I like over the years. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Starting with number 10, we have uh, a fragrance that is actually still the original and might surprise a couple people. We're talking about Dolce & Gabbana's The One, all right? So D&G The One is a fragrance that has been in my collection for a while now, and I reviewed and even stated I'm still going to get the, um, uh, the EDP concentration. This is the EDT concentration. I'm still getting the ED, uh, I'm still using this EDT simply because it's always worked well on my skin. I know a lot of people don't get good performance on it, but I get good performance on it, and it really just sits well on my skin. And whenever, whenever I wear it, I always have a little bit more confidence. People think that I smell good, and at the end of the day, that's all I really ask for. I usually tend to wear this when it's not too hot, not too cold, and still in those, you know, middling kind of times. And that's usually when I uh, pull this one out. So number 10 is Dolce Gabbana's The One. Number nine is a fragrance that I was mispronouncing. I actually not mispronouncing, but completely naming wrong for the longest time. But this time I'm actually gonna get it right. We're talking about a fragrance from the house of Guerlain. We're talking about Guerlain's Vetiver Frozen, right? Now, Vetiver Frozen, uh, this one, it's got a frosted box, or it's got the frosted marks, and I used to always think that it was just a plain vetiver, but this is actually vetiver frozen, and I absolutely love this version. It's a vetiver scent, but it's more of an uplifting, um, cheery vetiver, if you will. Most vetivers tend to be dirty, dark, and uh, very, I guess you could say, more subdued in it, or not subdued in the fact that it's not powerful, but more subdued in the aura that it kind of gives off. This one gives off more of a fun vibe. Staple at work, I pull this one out pretty much at all times, and this is one of my staple office scents. So a bit of a frozen, all right, at number nine. Number eight, we have a fragrance that I pull out when it's cold. When it's still cold in those colder months, um, and, or in the spring, I like to pull this one out because it still has a nice fruity vibe to it, and we're talking about 24 Gold. This is probably the heaviest fragrance that I have um, in my spring lineup, if you will. A 24 gold, it's got this nice resin uh, and, and still this kind of fruity resinous mix that's just absolutely fantastic. I used to sleep on this. If you've never heard of this fragrance before, check out my review, check out some other people's review. I was, you know, kind of thumbing my nose up at a, a, a fragrance that was uh, altered after a TV show. Who knew? This ended up turn, turning out to be really good. So 24 gold, it comes highly recommended. Number seven, we have a fragrance from the house of Prada. This fragrance has been in my collection for a while now. I like it because it's very clean. It is Prada Amber Pour Homme, right? This is a very clean, soapy type of a smell. And it, again, I hate to use this because it's overused, but it really just gets the job done. You wanna smell clean and professional. You wanna smell well put together, throw this one on. One of the downsides of this one, it may lean a little bit femme on people, but on me, it really doesn't lean feminine at all. It smells just a, a you know very clean and very well put together. Uh, so this one, again, another work scent, and I like to mix it up when I wear my fragrances to work. 
So Prada Amber Pour Homme is at number seven. Now number six, we have a fragrance that I actually don't have yet, so you will see a picture of this fragrance. This fragrance I will be picking up either this week or I think in two weeks. I'm basically flying and I'll probably pick it up in duty free. Uh, this fragrance we're talking about is called Dior's Sauvage. Don't get it confused. <laughs> Dior has so many Sauvage fragrances. This one I'm talking about is called Sauvage, and you, if you look around, or sorry, look on YouTube here, you'll see my review of this fragrance. I give it a 10 out of 10. And at the time I thought, oh, well, if I was going to buy it or not, just because it accomplished a similar thing with it. But as I've been even using it more, I decided I'm definitely pulling a trigger on this one, and this will definitely make it in, just because the reactions from people on this one are just through the roof. They're talk. they're you know, from people along the lines of, wow, what is it that you're wearing? Is that a... Uh, they think it's pheromones, actually. Some people think it's pheromones. That's how good this thing smells, at least on my skin. So that, you know, it's definitely getting in, into my collection for that, and I'm going to be purchasing it uh, shortly. So that one will definitely be worn throughout, and I'll probably alternate that, probably wear that more in the warmer months and Blue de Chanel more in the colder months. So. Little spoiler, Blue de Chanel is not in this top 10 designer list. All right, so next fragrance, number five. We have a fragrance from the house of Yves Saint Laurent. The fragrance we're talking about today is L'Homme at number five. Now, I like L'Homme. I like L'Homme a lot. I have probably gotten the most visceral reaction from people at work when I'm wearing this fragrance just because Anytime that I'm in a room with this fragrance, it seems to just fill the room with its scent. This is a lot more powerful than I, you know, give it credit for. It fills the room with the scent, and it's a very pleasant, pleasing scent. It almost reminds me of apple pie, if you will, that's more made into a fragrancy scent. That's what this gives off, and it just smells delicious on your skin, and on my skin especially. So that's why it's coming in at number five. I wear this one when it's a mix between hot and cold weather as well. Um, and I'm not quite sure what to wear to work. And if, you know, I kind of use this as part of my three-headed monster, if you will, to work. So I wear generally, or four-headed, actually. This one, um, Better of a Frozen, and Prada Amber Porum are really my three main fragrances. And a fourth, which is going to be coming up next, which is actually the number four fragrance. So with that segue, the number four fragrance is a one that I actually gave away to all my guests who attended my wedding. And that is, from the house of Terry Mugler, we've got Mugler Cologne. Now, this is the big bottle of the sucker. Mugler Cologne, in essence, is really just a simple, clean, fresh cologne smell. I've done a review on this one as well. Check it out if you want. I tend to wear a little bit more of this one. I Sometimes when I don't know what to wear when going out, I'll be like, all right, you know what? Mugler Cologne time. And just spray it like crazy. I'll go beyond like seven, eight, nine, ten sprays with the sucker, and it never chokes people out just because it's so clean and uh, got a nice little soapy tinge to it. Just smells like you took a shower and you came out of a fresh shower. So this is fantastic for that. So Mugler Cologne at number four, it gets up there surely mainly on usage and um, yeah, just mainly on usage. All right, number four Mugler Cologne. Number three, we have another Mugler fragrance, Terry Mugler fragrance. We're talking about. Ultra Zest. The orange bottle, this is the Mugler line that was released last year, and still this sucker is a rock star. It is very similar, I like it, it's similar to me to Angelman, or not Angelman, uh, Pure Havan, Pure Malt, very similar to those fragrances to me, but this has a more citrusy tinge to it, hence Zesty Tinge, Ultra Zest. That's why it's here. I wear it in all gamut of situation, but my wife loves it, I love it, people love it on me, that's where I when I wear it. All right, so any pretty much type of spring scenario that I can think of, I mainly wear this one actually going out. So if we're going out to like a party, going out to have friends or have fun with our friends, play games, whatever the case may be, I throw this one on, right? Move, ultra zest. Number two, we have my previous number one for the designer sign from the spring set. So the reigning champion has finally been dethroned, but it is still up there. It is still such an excellent scent that just 
provokes mm, fantastic memories. We are talking about Chanel's Allure Homme Edition Blanche. And I just love saying Edition Blanche. I just love saying that name as well, too. This is a lemon meringue pie in fragrance form. It's got such a sharp, freshly vibe to it. And not only is it fresh, but it's like, it's like soda almost on this. All right? Allure Homme Edition Blanche. Not much else can be said about this. And for the number one fragrance, we have another one that I don't have. Terre de Hermes, uh, Eau Tres Fresh. Now, Eau Tres Fresh, or I'm butchering that name left and right. Now, that fragrance, this one, I remember reviewing this one specifically, and when I say specifically, I mean I got really down in depth with this one, and it really evokes such strong feelings. Like, Dare to Emez, the original one, was a fragrance that I always thought was a really well-composed fragrance, and it was one that did extremely well. But I didn't think it was the fragrance for me. With this one by Jean-Claude Elena, this one fit my personality to a T. I was like, this is magical. This is such a fantastic fragrance, and I cannot sing praises for this. This one I am definitely picking up. I think it's tomorrow. Um, yeah, tomorrow I'll be picking this one up. When, if, hopefully, I go through Duty Free and I get this one, it's on my list for a reason. I will wear it in every single scenario that I can possibly think of, but it's definitely my rock star for, and my number one fragrance for spring, all right? So if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free. Send me a message. Leave me a note. Do whatever you got to do. Thank you guys, take care of yourselves, and also let me know what your top picks for the spring are, alright? Thank you guys, take care of yourselves, and you guys have a great day.